Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 17th of November. Thanks for joining us. Today, we've got Contributor Spotlight, LTS 2.426.1, Jenkins Contributor Summit, Google Summer of Code Preparations, and Update CLI, I think, is settled, actually. And then if there's anything to discuss on version documentation, any other topics we want to put on the list. Okay, so let's take it from there. Chris, are you at a point where you'd like to show Contributor Spotlight or do you want to spend just a minute on LTS before we give you the, the screen share? Maybe the LTS first. Okay, good. So Darren, we just released yesterday uh, a new, new LTS and Darren and Mark provided a 50 minute live stream review of the features and the url for that where is it what's oh it's it's in it's actually tweeted just a minute while i bring it up out of twitter and so it was there is a bunch that went into this latest lts really quite impressive and uh, so let's let's find that. Let's see, Jenkins. Here we go. All right, this is the. I'll embed the video URL here so that we've got it. So here's the video and the change log and release notes are available. Our change log and upgrade guide are available. This is the one that supports Java 21, uh, removes prototype JS, drops support for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, and several other interesting changes. So all those things looking good. That's all that I had on LTS 2.426.1. Chris, are you ready to show us Contributor Spotlight? Yep. All right, let's stop the sharing. Here we go. Okay, so uh, should be in this one. Mm -hmm. So it's um the the thing I've changed is for the image on this page. Yes. Yes, yeah, so it works that way. The rest, the other ones are dummies. Right. Um, if I click on that, I'd be like to uh, contribute the details page, which has all the details of the contributor interview. Excellent. Oh, this looks great, Chris. This looks, it looks absolutely exceptional. You're welcome. That's <laughs> wonderful. Okay. So now what are the next steps then? Does, do we, we need, certainly we need the ops team, Damien and Hervé and Stefan to be ready to deploy the site. Have they set up CI Mark, for you audio yet? is cutting in and out. I'm getting every third syllable. Oh, 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 oh. And that I, probably I, means I've got the I wrong setup. My, video thinking maybe it was yeah, me okay. just a minute and I'm, get, I'm hearing everything that chris says so it might be you oh okay yeah it could be yeah let's figure so can usb huh well my mic is set correctly let me do a check okay test oh. one two hmm so i'm not sure what's causing me to break up i'll uh well let's keep going chris show us there 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 it's, there i'm getting it all Okay, great. Let's, who knows? <laughs> so, Chris, in terms of the, what are what sort of things are the next steps for us? Then, are there are there? Um, we know that infra needs to deploy, and we need a CI set up for it. Yep. What other things are on the list? Uh, we may need preview set up for it. Okay. So we do process. Good. Uh, up to bow it. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much. This looks looks amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Really looks good, Chris. You're welcome. Who decides who's going to be put up there and who are you doing all the writing for it, Chris? No, no, no. Chris so the um, the writing actually comes from Kevin Martins. Okay. But the decision on who comes from data. 
we're really kind of proud of this actually. So we started a project to identify the top 30 contributors. Uh -huh. And we did that by looking at, initially we looked at pull requests and saw pull requests. And now we're actually gathering pull requests and comments. And it's a cool story to tell. It's a, an amazing thing to see the mix of people, who they are and where they're from. Ah, uh, but you don't, we don't have a way. We, we've got the number of pull requests but we couldn't, if somebody, I don't think anybody's doing this, but we say you'd come in and test and review PRs and stuff like that. And, and we can't capture that quickly, right? Well, PR comments, we certainly can. John okay. Mark's been looking at PR comments. The thing that we, that's much more difficult for us to capture, we haven't captured yet are, what about the people who help in Gitter chat channels? What about the people who help in the Jenkins user mailing list? What about people who are helping in, other places or who are, and, and those we aren't as well suited for. So, yeah. so the, the data we're gathering is imperfect, but it's certainly better than no data. Absolutely. Super. So thanks very much. Uh, we ready to go on to the next topic? Yep. Okay. So next topic then was Jenkins Contributor Summit at FOSDOM. So in Brussels, February the 2nd, interesting, why is Jenk, oh, Round here we go. Day. Yeah, on February, February 2nd of 2024, we will have the Jenkins Contributor Summit at Bru in Brussels. John Mark has found us a venue where we can meet and we've already got commitments from Uli Hoffner, he plans to be there and we expect Alex Brandis to be there. Certainly we know that Damien will be there, Damien Duportal and uh, Stefan Merrill and Hervé Lemieux. And we hope that I'll be there and that Alyssa will be there and several others. So, so we're looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be a great, and, and this picture is from last year. So I'm, I'm proud of it. Very good. All right. Any questions on FOSDOM? Okay, next topic then, GSOC 2024 preparation. Chris, do you wanna give us an overview? Um, yep, uh, so we have had uh, two meetings to discuss and to add ideas to a, to a project page. And um, now we have just four from last year's. We add to it. Um, with new ideas from Mark, me, and uh, also the others on uh, the as as GSOC as I team. <laughs> I think Harvey made a suggestion for a UI project too, so that, that might be interesting. Oh, good. Okay, that's a that's a cool idea. Good. All right. Because like we, they have um, they have a stats page, how we started on GitHub pages right now, but they may need some proper UI UX work. Yeah, so Hervé, if he was, I think he was reporting this one, and and this thing is is a very stone knife kind of user experience, right? You look at these <laughs> this picture, that's yeah, I see. Yeah, and and likewise this one. Now it's incredibly valuable what the data is that we have here, but the data is mm -hmm. the presentation is well, it's. It's ancient presentation to remind people of the kind of really cool presentation we get. If we look at, at what Gavin Mogan has done with the plugin site, here is one little tiny piece of data that I use all the time. And that thing comes from this same data source, but much nicer presentation here <laughs> rather than, than the, the thing that we saw tables of tables of data or graphs with no mark with no labels no symbols anything so much much better now the details are still available so i can still click this and it will in fact load up all the details and show me very interesting things good good idea chris i like that okay and i will publish the new ideas on to jenkins live over the next few days i think uh or at least i'll open the pr for it great all right yeah we need to add more details to each project idea as we go 
Well, and, and that's that's one that I've got to do some more on because certainly some of the ideas we had we had listed last time a number of ideas for for documentation. So Meg, this is one that is a, a very real problem that we have not, right now with the documentation site. When I look at Jenkins.io, I can there's this thing called an extensions index. But the extension, extensions index is generated by a program. And unfortunately, the program is broken by plugins using modern development techniques. Uh -huh. And so, so this list, you see, oh, it, it looks like, hey, there are a lot of things here. Except when you look at the list, you realize, oh, but there's no Git plugin. Oops. And there's no SCM API plugin, and there's no GitHub branch source plugin. And so what, it, what this is right now is this incredible shrinking list that's failing to show us all of the possible extensions that are actually out there. Yes. And, and the suggestion here is the tool needs to be rewritten. Rewritten, one, because its current technique is painfully slow and heavyweight. And the other is, it'd be a, it's a very good project, possibly for a shorter project rather than a medium or long project. Cool. Yeah. All right. So that's that's what I had for now. Chris, version documentation. Anything you want to share there? Um, we're still working on that, but um. <laughs> I think Vendit said something about like updating the version to documentation to the latest version, but I will need to check with him. So once it's done that, we can spit it out and we can uh, host it separately. So we can then have like, um, like both the um, Dentoy site and the Gatsby site up. Good. All right. So, so that the Gatsby site, the one that so Meg, to, to catch you up on this one, whereas the Jenkins site with its documentation has a kind of convoluted and, and weak navigation on the left-hand panel, what mm -hmm. the, the version documentation site that Vandit Singh has been working on as part, of, as part of Google Summer of Code 2023 and beyond, it gives us a lot nicer navigation and ah. it gives us version documentation. So you'll be able to look at the documentation as it was for a particular version of Jenkins that you have installed. Oh, that would be nice. Right. It's, it's a, it's a, an enormous work. It's amazing how much effort that Chris and Vandit have had to put into it. It's just absolutely phenomenal. So here's, here's how it looks though. And you can see the navigation is, is clean and elegant and, and the layout of the pages is is attractive. It's it's very nicely done. Oh, it's very nicely done. So, Chris, thanks again for your amazing work on it. And let me. I'm going to put a link to that page into the current notes just to be sure that we've got it. Any other topics we need to discuss today? Um, I have a half-assed thing to show. It. I'm some um a half-formed thought for you. Okay. Sorry, I forgot my Mormon language. Um, the the captain team swears like more than I do, and so I'm getting into bad habits again. Um, I was reading old minutes there and saw there was an interest in open telemetry. Uh huh. Is that for stuff running on Kubernetes or non Kubernetes? Uh, both actually. So open telemetry in this case is mostly about there's an open telemetry data source that's available for Jenkins and uh -huh. that it's willing to provide data to open telemetry consumers to open telemetry, I guess, receivers. I don't know what the word is to describe them, but things like Datadog or like Grafana. Um, and, and the idea here is we need more detailed view of some of our particularly expensive jobs on ci.jenkins.io. So for example, we have, we have one job that runs 10 virtual machines for an hour, an hour or more. Uh -huh. And, and we'd like to understand 
is there something we could do to save time in that thing to reduce costs? We have another, we, we have another job that runs 600, 610 plus uh, containers in parallel, um, some for 30 minutes or more. And the question then is, is there a way that we could use this, use open telemetry to see inside those things a little better to understand why they're, how we could save money? Uh huh. Um, for the Kubernetes thing, have you thought about just using Captain? Good question. So, um, so I, I confess, I don't know what Captain would do for us. Tell me what it would do for us. Well, the new Captain, but it's all, it's all cloud native. Um, okay. So, but for that, um, but we do support open telemetry with metrics, Captain metrics, which pick up Kubernetes metrics, as well as any metrics you define yourself. And we now oh. have an analysis function in there too, that will run analysis for you on your data. And it's, it's sophisticated. You can weight it. Um, you can have multiple things being evaluated, et cetera. Um, it's, I'm biased and naive, but I think it looks very cool. Interesting. Okay. So, so I'll need to do some more, some more looking and see. So it's a, yeah, I'll need to do some more research. I can give you, um, if you, do you want to flip over to open a new tab and go to captain.sh? Sure. Here we go. Where we are not as sophisticated as Jenkins. We're a junior we're starting out, so it's not as pretty. I'm going to docs. Uh huh. Getting started. Okay. And kept in observability. Hmm. Okay. And it's a you can read through that. Um. And then in the left frame, click on user guides and go to analysis. Analysis is just brand new. We've just gotten that. Okay. Um, but that now works with metrics and open telemetry. Interesting. And okay. So writing a blog post. So, so is, is the, the fundamental thing here then that we describe what we expect from our SLIs or SLOs and captain will then monitor that for us and, and give you us. Can, yes. Yes. Wow. Um, all you have to do is install Captain on your cluster and you will begin picking up open telemetry. And, oh, and you have to have your open telemetry provider defined, but a couple of trivial things, and it will start collecting uh, metrics and open telemetry. Ah. There. You can add in additional metrics of your own if you want, and then you can put the analysis on it. Um, the, the difference being metrics goes constantly your analysis you run when you want to and you say i want to run it for this time span or i want to run it for the last 10 minutes or whatever you can do either uh, one okay. um, and it uses um the query you you can query whatever database you're using um i think we currently support prometheus um datadog and, and dynatrace of course mm -hmm. uh, and you can use multiples of any of them. Um, but then you put your queries in. Your queries are in Golang. So you can put in variables to your analysis definition so that then each time you run the analysis, you can say, hey, you know, use this value. So you can reuse that definition for different criteria. Um, the feature is new, but the people who put it in are some people who've been working with this stuff for a long time. So fairly sophisticated. And I'm actually just reviewing. I think within a week or so, we're going to have a blog post about the analysis. I'm just reviewing it. I need to tighten up his prose a little bit, but it's very good. Um, cool. Okay, so the idea here then is it, there they we, we asked Kepton to track data or to track open telemetry mm -hmm. and it then exports that data makes it makes it visible to us yes and you, you can display it on grafana or jager or whatever else you want i think jager's part of grafana or something that gives you the full end-to-end -end trace 
of a deployment so you can see where the bottlenecks are quickly. Um, so it appears to be quite true, quite interesting. Thank you. Thanks very much for the pointer. Thank you. I'll point it, point it to Damien and others as well. Thank you. And if anybody wanted to, we do have two community meetings, which are typically very boring. We're not getting a lot of participation. Um, um, so you or Damien could pop into one of the community meetings and talk to the developers um, and get some details and see if it works. Thank you. Yes. Oh, Damien, I tell Damien I miss him so much and I feel like such a louse. <laughs> I, I certainly will. He smiled when I told him that you and I had dinner together. That's oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to highlight on Captain? No, no, that's an, I mean, you can also, um, if you want, um, on Kubernetes, the other cool thing, but they're separate, you can run them separately. Um, the other thing that's pretty cool if you're doing like a deployment is you can have Captain intercept the scheduler. So, because Kubernetes sort of does each service individually, each microservice. And you can say like, like these five microservices are all part of my deployment and don't spin up the pods until everything is ready for all of them. And it can also run tasks after the deployment. Hmm. Okay. Which comes in handy. Um, but it is, it's it's one product. You can run both parts or only one. It'd be hard to do the task stuff actually without the think possible to do some. But uh but the the metric the observability parts you could do completely without the task stuff. So, but you can poke around the documentation, which is, I don't know, maybe C plus B minus quality right now, but there's some information there. Thank you. Thanks very much. And uh, and we have a Slack channel. Tell um, Damien he can join us on Slack. And I will pass it. the word along. Okay. Anything else, Meg? No, I will shut up now. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks very much. I think I'm coming much. in and, and pitching my new project, but. Uh, thank you for sharing another open source project. That's great. Yeah. Any other topics for today? Chris, I assume none from you then. Yep. All right. Let's call today done. I'll stop the recording. Thanks very much. Okay. Good to talk to you all. Have a good week. Oh, thanks. We're not meeting.